the tone of the statement looks a lot more positive than we saw back in the middle of last year. Just tell us a bit more about the outlook here, because it does seem as though you're able now to take advantage of some improving trends. Well, we were obviously cautious when the pandemic hit us, and it was very difficult to assess early early last year what the impact uh, would be on our on our three different businesses. But our three businesses are all performing well. Our healthcare business has delivered excellent results. Our life science business is uh, is in a very strong position and gets further support from COVID uh, related demand. And we also see that our semiconductor materials a business, our electronics business is performing extremely well, given that we all live in such a digital world today. The, um, the challenges for the healthcare business still remain, I think, uh, the disturbance to normal life uh, for hospitals and clinics and doctors and so forth, which still means there's some impact on other procedures and activities around providing healthcare. Do you see that still being a factor in the first half of the year for you? So um, we, this, is, this is obviously related to the physical lockdown situation. Uh, we saw a strong impact in late Q1, early Q2 last year. Uh, for instance, in our fertility business, which is uh, sort of an elective uh, a type of uh, uh, treatment. And uh, we then saw that there was a strong resurgence. Um, we are active in fields such as oncology and multiple sclerosis. So these are severely ill patients that require, that require treatment. Uh, we see some impact. It varies from country, uh, from country to country. But overall, we have seen that our business is going back to normal. Stefan, can I ask you about the vaccine rollout? Uh, you played a fairly instrumental role a few weeks back uh, managing to up the supply of lipids to the biotech firm uh, BioNTech, which, of course, we've been watching very closely, the supply problems across Europe. Where do you think we're at now in terms of having all the crucial raw materials to produce these uh, COVID-19 vaccines? Yeah, as you said, Mac is supporting quite a few vaccine projects uh, worldwide. Uh, be it traditional vaccines, viral vector vaccines, or mRNA vaccines. Uh, we make single-use reactors. These are bioreactors uh, which are being used for producing vaccines. We're producing, uh, we're producing lipids for the nanoparticles for the formulation of mRNA. We've made an acquisition uh, a, a couple of weeks ago of a company that makes active drugs, drug substance for uh, for RNA, for RNA therapies, so we're very much involved in this. There have been shortages, yes, all suppliers, also our competitors are struggling with the same type of situation, but we have, for instance, for single-use reactors, we have, uh, in record time, we have set up a new facility in Massachusetts, uh, which is doubling our, uh, which is doubling our output, that um, FAB is online as of, uh, as of January. And uh, you were referring to the partnership we had with, with BioNTech on uh, lipid development and, uh, and manufacturing. And we think that we are making considerable progress on this to fulfill all demand.